How's it going, people? It's us. We're here. It's misplay for the game LLC. Woo! We're taking over. I'm in the background. Yeah, we're going straight into the game. Uh, you know, we'll, we'll bring this up. We got uh, Mr. Tommy NT with us as well. It's the full misplay for game crew. They said we'd never do it. They said you couldn't get a non-caster to cast the regional. And I said, 9 a.m., sign me up. So immediately here we have... Uh, the Gambler. He won a regional this year. Uh, yeah, uh, the name's probably not we're correct. We're going to change the names very quickly, but we see the Tyrant uh, player here representing. We've got the mat, and we have to start with a trading, which is not great. Uh, takes the HPD, um, I think. HPD is fine, you know, um, given the context of the, of the hand. It'll probably get him back into the game. And then we're going to see a boost as well. Uh, looks like the camera is frozen here from the player. Uh -huh. uh, We'll be slowly catching up. Yeah, it's the, the joys of online regionals. Sometimes you just have a connection issue. Ooh. Oh, we blinked. Are we back? They seem okay now. As if the Tyrant SOC matchup wasn't frustrating enough, here we are again. <laughs> Discord makes it better. AG is really hacking into the mainframe here of his opponent. Um, and it looks like he took something, but it's a little bit hard to tell what he took. Yeah, it's a really unfortunate time really for cameras to cut, but you just got to make uh, do with what you've got. It seems like they're playing it on. I was going to say, you could, be, you could be calling and casting in from a potato to still see how strong BT14 Lugamon is, start of main, take an AG from hand or trash, gain a memory. So, I mean, some people have claimed it might be a top five purple card of all time. Um, I think... It might be a top five card that makes a difference in your first round matchup at a regional. It's also Not at least that much is certain. It's also oh. interesting here that uh, this purple, um, it, because it's purple Dorogara, and if you look at the board state, the Tyrant player currently is so far behind that the Luga player is very comfortable just promoting and developing his first stack, even if it's a stack that could potentially get, you know, uh, have an option used on it or something like that. However, uh, green... Right now, we see the Tentamon being placed in the back, and this effectively will allow the purple player to uh, start uh, playing very aggressively uh, without really having to suffer the repercussions from a Tyrant potentially like clearing back. Because remember that the purple base of Dorogoromon doesn't have protection from bot decking, only deletion. Seeing, I believe that's a green memory boost and a training set and delay. So we're we're starting with enough gas to climb up to the tyrant potentially. But it's worth going through this and looking at like the options and components of the deck building that have been revealed so far. Uh, deck Storu Greymon, a card that I think you generally see a little bit fewer of in most of these popular pretty purple base lists. Um, a lot more on the level fours and level sixes, obviously. But uh. Interesting to see that, you know, in terms of what you have to play around and, and giving yourself the option to, to aggressively promote and push on the board here, um, kind of giving yourself fake jamming is a pretty good starting line here. I, I believe that's just regular AG Nagasumi and not Code Cracker Fang that's going in and out there because we're not going to free every turn. Yeah, it's, it's yeah, the regular AG. Boost so goes up. Boost goes up, and then immediately here, I think the Tyrant player, if it could have been a bait from the Izzy, they knew that they would eventually get the Izzy removed, but it does mean that this forces them to go into the Dorogoromon very early on to try get value from removing the Izzy, which does expose them to other things since they're not properly setting up the trash and immediately Ooh, the Tyrant from no security. Dorogram. Wow. Damn, actually, like, Giga IQ. No but... DP inherits from having the purple sources, no, or excuse me, the only DP in that stack, I think, was Doru Gamon himself, so rough to hit that and go one under, but that's kind of the risk of swinging your, without your alliance piece. Yeah, it does actually get the code Cracker Fang into trash off the analog youth, so in terms of being able to rebuild, it's actually not that bad, because we're going to get, uh, since it's purple Gora, there you can rebuild from the trash. So in terms of making the full line, we're going to be able to push out, get the AG under, make the four. And then as long as we still have a five and six, we can kind of just keep it going from there. From what it looks like, it's almost like the matchup is now uh, flipped on its head since now the Tyrant player is pretty much set up and has no real reason to push out. They opt here to skip on the Tentamon start of main phase in order to give themselves that extra 2k pump from the Quagmon promo, a very good card in Tyrant. Um, does solve a lot of the issues with the deck has with uh, maintaining power turn after turn makes things a little bit easier 
um, meaning that your tyrant on average is going to be uh, 16k uh, without any other buffs, just plus 16, it's a pretty good number. Um, and the Luga player team is playing for more setup, and now they're going to be playing effectively a game of chicken, and we see here the Helugar, this is very interesting. Typically, Purple Gora doesn't really run Helugar, but looks like this player opted to add that into his deck. I mean, the card is an incredibly powerful card, being able to just uh, set up your trash, draw cards, and reset sort of your board state, uh, thanks to that analog uh, youth. Looks like Tyrant off the search, or excuse me, uh, uh, Hercules off the search. Something to see early is the ability to make that defended from a Digimon effects boss monster without needing to pay the full cost for Tyrant. Obviously, Tyrant himself largely preferable in a matchup against Purple Base, as like Marcio mentioned. No defense against bot decking. Why actually fight through the dex mechanic when you can just deal with it that way? But there's a lot to be said when your opponent reveals a level 5 that can pop a level 6. Making a level 6 that can't be popped for less memory is typically a pretty efficient line. Very interesting here that the Luga player didn't choose to take opportunity of the body from uh, being on board, being able to effectively floodgate out the Tyrant player from raising that Quagamon since they would fall to the trap from uh, the Dorgramon popping an unsuspended Digimon and also being able to taunt that um, Kokabu. Uh, instead, we're just going to see this Kokabu go through. Uh, but now the trash is pretty much set up here for the Purple Gora player. They have just about every dex piece that they need in the trash and as well as the AG. So this is actually quite good here for the Tyrant play. The fact that their Kokabu uh, died in security means that they're no longer really exposed to a potential taunt play. And the other thing that got revealed was the Hercules Kabuterimon. Now, Hercules Kabuterimon is an incredible card in this matchup because having that sort of main phase suspend means that the Gora player can no longer uh, block, which is very, very important in terms of making sure that they don't let the Goramon player evolve on their own turn and taking out the Tyrant potentially before it has a chance to become suspended. So it's another card that really flips the matchup on its head. Oh, go ahead and get and started on another purple pop off turn. Lugamon prints him like it's a thing to do. Start a main, pick up the AG. I believe that was another one from Trash. So it looks like we're picking up the Code Cracker Fang this time. From yeah, what I can tell. it was the one that we Trained hit off Baruga. of the um, analog youth the turn before. Mm -hmm. And look at uh, look at how thin the purple player's uh, deck looks. You know, considering that they've used a few boosts, two analogs, and just generally the draw uh, pitch cycle. They eventually have to close out the game. They're, they can't just set up forever. They do eventually need to start going through the Tyrant player's security. And the Tyrant player here has really no reason to... To, to play the out. game with him. Yeah, like you knew that he was going to be able to do full combo here thanks to the purple egg, regardless of whether he had it in hand. So just staying in the back, biding his time. LBT9. <laughs> One check gets to live. Does mean that he doesn't need to waste his... Um, his decks evolved from trash here. I am kind of surprised that we did go for the switch. I mean, yeah, I guess if there was a decks in trash, then it's technically like fine value. The only thing that possibly spins you is like hitting Shine of B out of security. Shine of B, Gargle Missile, yeah. just about. Revealing, revealing some of those unknowns early makes a big difference in terms of the gameplay for this player here because, like, you know, this is part of what you do in risking a deck like this where you set up so consistently and thoroughly is you kind of show your entire 50 card list to your opponent right off the bat. We're four and a half minutes into this round and we've seen the calling, we've seen the rough counts of some of the decks forms, different pieces kind of going and showing. Whereas in terms of like actually tech revealed from a bugs player, I think that's just Pokemon off a of random security check is about as much as non-engine you'd expect. So um, it comes with a certain amount of risk is getting, getting this set up, but We'll see if they can kind of close it out, like Marcia said. It's tough with the uh, the advantage of the purple base being having alliance and being huge, but we've been playing largely single stack Gora this whole time. And I believe this is probably a very comfortable turn here for the Tyrant player to raise. There is a dex form uh, on the field, so that means that they can very easily just swing over that body. They have boosts and trainings to work with, and while they could get taxed by the analog, it largely does not matter too much without the egg. Uh, it's very hard for the purple player to have pretty much like all the pieces unless the calling added back the Doruga, even then with no AG. Uh, you see here that they chose to keep the AG instead of taking it out at the end of the turn. That would have maybe kept turn, but it would have meant that they would have had a tamer for them to 
uh, slide under the uh, Luga, so that way they would be able to play their uh, taunt setup. But instead, we're just going to see here the Hercules, good old Hercules, you know, it does have piercing, uh, or, or rather, it can pass piercing around, so it doesn't, it uh, means that he can choose to play other ESSs to supplement his stack, and this Hercules will most likely just sort of win the game on its own. From here on out, he doesn't really have to do anything other than start off main phase suspend and then swing over. Yes, there is some dex forms in the trash, but remember, you're sideways, so none of your bugs are really affected by any sort of effects that the purple player has, unless he's playing uh, option removal. So we do get to check a Helugar, and as a Tyrant player or a, you know, a green bug player, he's in an incredibly favorable position. Um, he's up on, well, they're about the same on life, but there's no real sort of punish to him just having this Hercules out. Um, yeah, the main thing that was like, because it was a promotion turn, we didn't, like, you don't have to worry about an immediate crack back. Uh, you know, we're not in scramble format yet, so and I'm kind of surprised we went into the deck story gray um, so early, in all honesty. There also wasn't any uh, Demon Wolf of the Nine Castles Wolf Castle. Yeah. I don't know the name of the card off the top of my head, but I know the word Castle, Demon, and Wolf are in the text. Yeah. Mickey like... Mouse's Clubhouse had yet to hit the delay area, so uh, it's how it goes. I do think it's interesting to see specifically that our Bugs player chose to promote and then pass a larger amount of memory than committing the training or the boost. I don't necessarily disagree with the line. I just, it does put a sort of different pressure on your opponent. You are looking at playing Dorigoramon and rebuilding back on a board against something that is largely completely unaffected by your main gimmick here uh it is tough to know that they also have extra flex to spend so yeah i think it's really um, heads up to not try and just like immediately spend their resources and accept so that they can still keep turn without it and therefore it's better to save for the inevitable crackback that you know is going to happen because it well, is purple and if you don't end the, the lotman the lotman just being hard played giving the uh, hercules alliance so he can swing for two checks uh, we do see a Tamer popping out, which is completely fine. Followed Yuji by a and a boost. It suddenly less became, fine. yeah, way less fine. However, he does have, I believe, a Tentomon in the back. And Tentomon does the same role as the uh, Hercules, which is effectively to just start of main phase, suspend the Gora. So none of the effects to, you know, evolve on the opponent's turn will really work. And also it takes away the uh, blocker. Oh, wait, yeah. Surely Herc being start of main just completely invalidates this yes. matchup. Oh, 100%. Long it's day on, for him. <laughs> it's one of the ways that, like, typically the matchup is somewhat purple, uh, f f uh, Gora favored. However, if you find ways to suspend during the main phase or a fa effects to suspend on attack, for example, the Extramon, those are your main ways to sort of deal with the, um, with the uh, Dorogora uh, stacks. Yeah, that's really clean. Imagine that, Andrew, and then imagine that in another three months' time, the Tentamons will be coming out of the discard pile. <laughs> hmm. We'll see. Uh, we see a kind of, I would say, trepidatious start of turn here from our Goro player. Uh, the UG is a cool pickup. I, I think, obviously, a lot of people have come to expect it in the black bases, but you can't deny obvious X antibody synergy. And if you find some of your powerful one ofs, you may as well go crazy with them. Mm -hmm. um, but it is a kind of damned if you do, damned if you don't moment here because there is not a ton of accessible board presence you can produce from this. Obviously, you, you risk very little in the way of like blast, digivolve threat. There's not a ton of like, you know, I have, you could get paladin mode check, but uh, I just don't think there's any point. The, yeah, exactly. The, you would assume based on the position the bug player is built in that you, you would expect them to not want to give up their level six. So um, there's some merit in considering how best you can promote your own lethal line here. But it's a it's a tough break. Ten minutes down on the clock for Mario here. It's it's a it's a position. Some people, I would argue, come to the conclusions where it's, you know, when do you start assessing your matchup in terms of like, is it time for me to go to game two? Is it time to reveal less information about my list? Um, because it's a it's a tough break presenting lethal on board for bugs. Bugs is a um, I would I would say stubborn deck. It it likes to put itself in checkmate and go, you got it like that. And it turns out most decks don't. Yeah, like unless you're uh, you know, the color of belligerence red. It's pretty hard to get bigger than Tyrant in a lot of these situations. Like obviously both these decks can abuse Alliance. Uh, so that would be kind of your main route. And I think this kind of game one matchup check has been a, hey, yeah, you probably do actually want to find that Alliance. It's been really heads up from the Bugs player to stay in the back and not give anything on board to fight with. 
Um, but yeah, the, we could definitely be in an instance where just a second body next to these could actually give us the alliance to be able to try and punch over things like that. Actually kind of try and force out uh, an ace. Because I guess in theory, if you can play a three cost body or even five cost body, oh, never mind, this was training, not a thing. If you could play like a three cost body, then you would in theory be able to swing mm -hmm. with Alliance to try and get bigger than the Herc and then crash and try and de evolve. That's basically what the matchup comes down to is just making sure that the other player doesn't have another body out on board. Well, see, remember when I said that the Tyron player has effectively like zero reason to go into Tyron as soon as they find a Hercules? Yeah. Um, the real only punishes to this is if they can somehow... Uh, make their tyrant uh or sorry if the gora player could make their stack somehow bigger now the tyrant player doesn't have any all turns 1k dp so i believe it's just that nice uh, 12k dp uh the gora player that does have the ability to swing into it uh because um they do have the decks in trash and also the tyrant player once you have the uh, hercules you're sort of forced to have that meta life um, as the SS. And now we're happy to commit into, I believe, the Paladin, mode. Paladin mode. Paladin. Yeah. I was saying before, you'd be a little anxious to give up your protection, but not, I would say, in a scenario where you could potentially take away your opponent's entire discard pile. Yeah, we were attempting to try and resolve decks first, but you do get to finish bot decking the entire deck. So they're probably going to give them the entire list back. I believe so. I think making sure that you're taking out the decks from the trash is the most important thing now. I am not. 100% sure on how the priority would work here since Dex is interruptive, but we uh, are in the blast phase effectively. Yeah, yeah and, I don't believe combat has started, so it is yet to be deleted via battle. Uh, that is true. Yeah, that is true. yeah big pickup like here. Yeah, it's one not like messing with. It means that the Paladin gets to effectively swing for two and just sort of win the game on its own. Yeah, so it makes sense to scoop it up here. Like, you just lost your board, you just lost your trash, you're resetting from zero, so... Really solid stuff uh, from the Bugs player. I actually have these names backwards. Smart. Very beautiful comeback in all honesty. He was able to stabilize very quickly uh, after not finding his pieces for a turn or two. And it was unfortunate the Gora player was put in a less favorable situation by fresh checking a Tyrant. But that's just, you know, it could have been uh, Gaia Force and have been effectively the same result, right? Yeah. Considering oh, well-timed they... Tyrant insecurity, as they say. Mm -hmm. Considering that they didn't have any of the dex forms in the trash, I think they opted to discard a dex uh, gray, so it wasn't like the uh, Doru Greymon... Oh, sorry, the Doru Goramon could have been protected. Um, sometimes a, lot of that, a lot of that came down to the decision, I think, to remove the Izzy, which is a pretend... You know, you called it out when it happened. Is there some psychological aspect to that of like, come on, come out, pop my memory center. So Pretty much. You want to give uh, them a, value, right? back and forth. Exactly. You want to force them to go into the uh, Doru Goromon, like as soon as possible, just because the earlier they're on that uh, Doru Goromon, the earlier you could effectively like develop your game plan. Uh, I've played this matchup like a ton, and even though the Tyrant player is making it look very, very good for it here, you know, it does come with some uh, checks and balances. Most importantly, just making sure you're finding the right pieces at those start of main phase suspends. Those are the most important things. Once you find those, then you can sort of navigate the rest of the, the game a little bit. Um, it was also caution. super important that he didn't have to commit any, like, searcher bodies to board. The fact that a lot of his searches came from delay options was really helpful, because mm -hmm. it meant that he did have time to just play in the back and still create a stack that would be able to go up. And the fact that he never even had to use those delay resources and was kind of just able to vanilla climb up to a Hercules and then kind of close out from there was really sick. We are going to be going into game two with the uh, Bugs player going first. Oh, no, the Bugs player going second, sorry. I mean, it's Ukomon, so really both players are going second. Hmm. I quite like the Ukomon here from the uh, Gora player. You know, you get to just effectively raise, uh, put yourself in a pretty good position, and this Ukomon can gain you a ton of value. Uh, there's no real punish here from the uh, tyrant player it's not like you're going to take the ukomon as bait because then you're exposing yourself to something like a classic you know lugamon into daruga into doru gray type of play taking the cracker fang here makes a lot of sense i'd be uh kind of shocked if they picked up the gray here i feel like both of these uh searches have kind of really dictated how the game is going to go like in a situation where you see the tyrant 
and uh, a Tento Mon, like not picking the Tyrant kind of telegraphs that you have uh, a level six in hand that's going to be fully protected. And then the, um, it, the, the same is kind of true for taking the Cracker Fang. Like if you don't take it, it implies you already have one. But I mean, there's also no reason really to play this mind game. I'm going to push out have ooh, so now you have the choice i feel like you take the decks here because you already have you already the have things coming down yeah exactly right. yeah like i guess on one instance like what you don't take here goes to the bottom of the deck so it's kind of like deciding that you're not going to get uh, an additional ag for additional memory stuff and then yeah it's going to be the code cracker fang so you're going to gain the one and we can play from here. Obviously, there's nothing in trash and nothing to taunt, so we are still going to actually have to play, but if he picked up the AG, the fact that we have the second Luger in trash kind of shows that we could have kind of really extended further. Staying without an off turn, I think, is really important, considering the last game definitely came down to uh, the instances of getting removed and not being able to immediately taunt on the crackback. Having that rookie ready to go I think is really sick because it also means that it doesn't matter what happens to this uh, level four stack. If it dies, then the Cracker Fang is immediately there to basically full combo straight away. And we're going to put the Dora Gray out and kind of just see if we're going to play with him. It's an interesting game of back and forth here. One of the first things that we sort of resolved off training to training back and forth neutral here was watching both start of main rookies go to bot deck. So. I think it's a fun concept to sort of determine between these players. A lot of this matchup can kind of be brought down to like, you're probably not winning off your first stack, but the second stack really does need to be decisive. So is the decision to keep just two Lugamons, or at least as we had it revealed, not keep that first Tentomon, is that enough to get you over the hump that you need to make here? Because it, it can pose a pretty huge threat. I guess the idea is that uh the bugs player doesn't really have to play on board like as we say that they have chosen to actually commit so i guess maybe the goal is to go meta life and then go herc herc suspend the dory gray and try and punch over uh, you can't even really punch over it is the problem yeah the main in the trash gives you a lot of trouble I think taking out the Ukomon is like sort of like the first step to getting into a good position. Uh, it, we could see the Ukomon being the one that gets suspended. However, the Dora Grade does have blocker, and that is something that uh, we do want to watch out for because we don't want to give ourselves a free evolution to the to the Gore player. So we're just gonna go for the Tyrant. This way, it Ooh. does mean we have a valid attack target now. Huge punish here. Mm -hmm. It does as long as we play something that is effectively. Uh, 8k dp so most of your level fives as long as we play level five we should be able to bot deck this uh, uh level five stack or blade or, can blade give itself enough dp yes it. blade can give itself power become effectively 8k um however if we notice the stack it means that we are exposing ourselves to having the uh, me, uh the blade quagmon be the one that gets taunted so it's forced to attack and it means that the timer will be able to get uh, deleted because it would not be um, suspended by the time that, you know, we set up this taunt play. It just effectively uh, puts the Gora player on, show me that you have effectively another uh, rep of the loop. Do you have a tamer? The, we know that they have the tamer. And the, because they have the tamer, it means that they should have the level four in the trash. So the Balmond here is effectively letting us play for, for free. It yeah. just comes down to, do they have another copy of Doru Greymon and Doru Goramon? Yeah, that's kind of what I wasn't sure if we were going to actually try and play on board this turn. Because the fact that it's purple base means that you know that one level four is exactly all you need mm -hmm. to play the rest of the game. Like, you can be incredibly greedy uh, off the first stack. I guess technically, though, because the first stack was suboptimal, it didn't actually have the Dory Grace. So you do actually have to pay cost for this one rather than going uh, for the decks and trash uh, just on the timing of it. Which I guess is one saving grace. They, you know, they actually had to pay memory, but I think we're going to be full clearing in this instance. And this is a position that you as the purple player want to be in. You want to make sure that you have something that you're able to delete. So you do have that meta life. 
which means that all of your ability, or all of your effects to play our guys from the trash will be live. So you can effectively set up your own alliance fodder, which was something that he was struggling with in the first game. Now, granted, that was that came down to uh, an unfortunate security check. I think it's a tough question to see, like, how far out of resources in hand do you commit? Because you know the, uh, well, we've been here before. The Paladin mode isn't. It's something you have to be playing. So do we just sort of pass low, let the start a main taunt, kind of do its work here? Or is there a further amount of building on board we can do? I like the AG a lot. I think the AG represents sort of a secondary avenue towards rebuilding, but without another egg in the back. And notably, no analog use. There's a position that no dex player would ever really voluntarily put themselves into. Oh, but he told oh, the, the tyrant. Uh, the, uh, that is maybe something experience. we don't know, but that's. I mean, I guess in, in terms of like making sure that you get your dex line, I I, I see the vision, but yeah, that is. Uh, that is, he'll definitely be smaller now, and then I guess gets to dex evolve, but uh, you know, it, it, it's a it's a particular read, that's for sure. Yeah, that's definitely matchup and experience. I mean, how many people have competent bugs players in their region? It could also be the fact that he's effectively trying to play. Uh, the matchup like the other way by giving himself the ability to uh, clear one thing it means that he can guarantee have that body out to that alliance over the tyrant on his following turn and even if he you know chooses to block here he also gets a free evolution uh which means that he, he he's not necessarily losing out on suspense because it wouldn't be like it's not like he has anything to delete anyway um but it means that if he has say for example access to the dex door gray and trash he could potentially pop one of his bodies to give himself like extra damage right okay so we get to how big is that sick dog at the minute he looks is that what 13k so plus i can't see if there's any dp oh there's a dex door sorry there's a dorugamon in the sources isn't there so that's at least 1000 yeah so it is it is a tall order to bot deck that card at the moment also the tyrant here is currently plus 2k from the grand quagga promo and i think plus 1k all turns from the uh kokabu uh so this tyrant should be around uh, 15k on. i think you have to stay in the back here i don't think you get away with this again but they may just be out of searches it was kind of what i was alluding to last time they got quite fortunate that when they had to dig it wasn't with a body and it looks like amongst the pixels there's a training and a boost that were revealed off this mm -hmm. or two trainings we're gonna i think we have to take whatever body it is and it does mean that now because the Lugamon is only 1k DP. We can choose to suspend our own Kokabu to then bot deck that Luga, effectively resetting the work that the um, Dorogre player has done. It does mean also that uh, because they are able to pop out that AG at the uh, end of the turn, they do have enough memory. I mean, they already had enough memory with the Cracker Fag, but they can just hard slam a body here and try to alliance over. Um, but it's numbers wise, you know, uh, what rookies does go, uh, do, um, what rookies does purple gora play that will give them enough dp to swing over this tyrant because remember the tyrant is effectively uh, 15k dp yeah we actually do really also need the uh, gora player to have a means of pitching a daruga because right now i think it's still dex doruga like the stack that we've got right now is holding the uh, doru hostage so in terms of being able to taunt, I actually don't know, unless I'm missing something, I don't think we actually have, um, I don't think we actually have a means of resetting a taunt off of the egg. Although from them committing the Luga to board, I think we're going to see a redirect, but I don't remember. Can, um, Metal Life, can Metal Life redirect into not the stack? Yes, Metal Life can uh, redirect into any suspended uh, body. Oh. So looks like the the ESS was used to uh, prevent the tyrant from being deleted, which I quite like. It means that we don't really have a paladin. So if correct me if I'm wrong, the uh, red Luga is two K DP. Yeah. So it would have been fifteen into fifteen. Uh, Kokabu, I believe, is generic. Uh, the alterns if suspended. So if he had the paladin, he could have made himself seventeen. Um. But obviously, we don't want to use a paladin for free if we don't have to. And we can kind of just maintain this current board state, and we're just going to swing a security. I am shocked that there was no revive. Were there no targets? Um, who knows? Yeah, there must have been no targets, because their trash is really thin right now. So there must have been no targets to get the free play body after going for the crash. 
Well, I think the Lugamon was revived on the previous turn, and that's the only three we'd seen go to the discard pile. And then the Ukamon, obviously not being tagged, kind of rules it out. And those are the only threes that have hit the board that didn't immediately go into a stack. There we go. Doruga number two, being able to taunt the Tyrant here means that he's effectively um, turn skipping the stack in the back. Which is fine. It's I completely fine, I think. If it was a Tentomon, it would feel a lot, it would feel a lot worse, but because it's just a Kokabu here, you don't super care. Mm -hmm. Once again, the risk is there too, that without the, uh, I can't quite tell, I think he's mind linked with Cracker Fang at the moment, from what, the one mono purple source underneath that Lugamon. But, yeah, because uh, the AG is under the uh, decks. I think yeah. it was, I think it's double Cracker Fang because he started his turn at uh, three. And then he got a memory back from the uh, Luga when he pl hard played the other Luga. So I think uh, the Gora plays on Double Cracker Fang. Uh, no, it's the, I can definitely read AG underneath oh. the decks. Yeah, it's definitely AG. So I think we should have been up a memory, but you know, um, board state. Game Accepted game state goes a long way. We see the other Cracker Fang. Any that's definitely Cracker Fang, right? Yeah, that's definitely. Okay. All right, so we're going to go into the Dora Gray. We... Oh, the pre-release shinies. Guys, pre-release cards do make you do a little better. All right. They we... don't tell you that. Big Bandai doesn't tell you. But... So okay. we do have reboot. Yeah, so ending opponent's turn. We're going to bring out the AG, and then we're going to leave the Cracker Fang in there. It's not a rebuild. It, like, it's not a rebuild Luger, to be fair. But, I mean, there's no way that you can... There's no way to not stop, like, the start of main. There's no taunts or anything. Going to be forced to swing. We are going to be protected once again. Presumably, this Dora Gray is going to turn into a Gora. The thing is, does he have another Dex Gora in the trash? I don't think so. But, I mean, he's doing this with so much confidence. Oh. It does not look like it. It doesn't look like it. Uh, I mean, if you like cycling cards, that is certainly one way of cycling some cards. And listen, he is still a 5 security. But this bug has not hit him in the head yet. Oh. Does it make a difference? He does get to unsuspend his uh, Dex uh, Dorogora, however, there's no blocker there. Now, the Tyrant player here is pretty much happy to just play delays and keep evolving in the back. Like, from this position, he has the redirect as long, uh, even if his Tyrant effectively, like, gets wiped out, I don't think he particularly super cares about this position, right? As long as he sets up his uh, stack in the back, uh, that can effectively checkmate whatever the purple player setups here. He does need to pass him low, though, because of the kind of mismanagement of AGs. Mm -hmm. If he passes him low, the code Cracker Fang is gone. Oh, we're going to see Kokabu number. Give it up for Kokabu number four, I believe. Yeah. It, once again, bottom decking two consistency pieces, a training and a boost for sure this time revealed off of that. Is that an Izzy we're picking up? Yeah, is, it looks like it. Izzy on the left. It. This play, I think, is like, okay. Um... I think the Tyrant being able to suspend the um, the Kokabu here. committing pieces here. Hmm, we are digging, digging. We're it gonna give the DP. Okay. The DP could be pretty good, even if we give it to the Kokabu itself. Um, we on it only really loses to like a handful of things, and this could potentially, you know, mind game the opponent to playing around a uh, Mega Kabuterimon Ace. That's a card that you know a lot of the. Um, more recent uh, Tyrantless have opted to take it out, but you never know. It, it's a card that definitely can put in work uh, in the right scenario, especially later into the game. Uh, people just kind of forget to play around it, and it's an incredibly powerful card. Getting that big on a level 5 will trip anybody up. I don't care how big the, the, the Dora Greymon manages to sneak its way up to. Uh, especially in this build, again, like we reiterate before, a lot of the power of the purple base was the Alliance effect and sort of consistently cheating its DP gain, but with the absence of those 1k DPs from Dorumon and his oh. whole... Oh, we are just missequencing everything here. I mean, it can happen. Um... Yeah, like, they didn't, bring, they didn't bring the AG out. And they don't have a Tamer underneath, so no Taunt, correct? Uh, yes. Yeah, no, no Taunt. You just get the draw cycle. So, this is, you know, less than favorable. Uh, but it happens. Sometimes, you know, the, the Balmon Egg is such a crazy egg that sometimes you just forget to, to use it, right? It's like... Uh, we do get to delete the um, like Ghost, yep. the the uh, the Blade Quagamon here, so that's not completely the worst thing oh. in the world. Oh wait, that's an egg. Okay, 
Yeah. So okay. now we get to Alliance here. I don't remember. I don't know where he passed the power. Uh, he but... passed it over to the Tyrant, but I mean, okay. Alliancing 14 plus 6 plus Inherits is enough to clear. And then we do get a nice unsuspend here. Now, the question is, do you swing or do you not swing? Because swinging at the opponent's 4 security means that, you know, an Izzy could pop up, a uh, delay, and the Tyrant player here opting to, instead of playing, instead of developing his resources to make sure that he has a stack on raising, he's effectively just like on a level 3, right? And it doesn't really matter here i don't think he has enough memory considering the fact that it's incredibly easy for luga to oh, okay well never oh, mind ain't no way no he's bigger he's bigger no no, he no he's not he's not alliance he's not allianced this oh, was of just... course pardon me wow what a loss that's crazy that is two for two on getting bailed out by a big digimon Bro. yeah once again <laughs> and just like that now things look quite promising so he does <laughs> evolve for one here vagor has been ego lifting at the gym he needs a spotter asap Wait. She should have called Doramon back. Those 1k DPs don't come up enough. Reaver Blocker largely does not matter here. The, you know, you can just, like, evolve into a level 4 and you, you're largely fine. Yeah. Even you, if you can pull out the, the Cracker Fag at the turn. But like, we really need to... Like, it's obviously an expensive Evo. Like, it's going to be a 4-cost champion. But, like, please don't commit a body to board again. Unless you're... I mean, dropping the Quagamon is actually kind of peak. Like, being able to... Uh, stunlock the no, not the Izzy, not the Izzy. Yeah. Oh well, look, mate, we've seen what three Goras revealed and used, so maybe that, this is a certain you don't have it to this line. That is also true. That is also very true. But the problem is the Balmon is just going to let you find it. Oh, you could just evolve from the trash. Yeah, like the Bal, it doesn't matter. Like you load AG up, accepted game plan, goodbye. Pop the Izzy. At the very least, he's not going to be able to. He's declining to pop the Izzy? Me when Is I it hit. optional? Me when I oh, hit advantage. I mean, she yeah. <laughs> we have the decks of all. We have the decks Yeah, evolved. okay. We still do get to play, but that is really funny. They are actually 0 for 3 on non-alliance swings. I would simply never go sideways without my homie. Yeah, so Izzy does unfortunately go here. And now, how much memory can you pass? Because... Making a blocker here, while you can make a reboot blocker, it doesn't super matter. So I think if you just play um, a delay and then use the uh, AG to pop out at the end of the turn, you can choke your opponent at one. I think that is the smartest thing that you can do here. That's a really uh, important training, though, being able to pick up the last uh, Daruga piece, because if they stay in the back, they're still like, it's going to be the off turn return. Oh, there's no eggs. They're out of eggs now, actually, thanks to the Ukamons. So... I was going to say it means that the um, player actually can't redevelop here. Evolving into the level 4. I'm actually kind of surprised. Do we have a kill line potentially here with, um, with 2 security? Do we have a dex Doru grade in this stack? I don't believe so. So it's not like we can uh, pop our own... A rookie that we can, you know, hard play to unsuspend thanks to the, uh, thanks Hear to me the... Up, fellas. It's drop the UG, stick in a door who grab on the, the one of them, the one of them, <laughs> but then you still don't have enough uh, memory to hard play a rookie, yeah, right? So he gains the one back off of the uh, Luga. The Luga oh, no, area. sorry, it's oh, uh, wrong Luga, yeah, yeah wrong that's Luga. the BT15. Wow, we mentioned it earlier, and then still it comes up to bite him in the butt. All right. Hey, clearing security is a big deal. It's pirate. Oh, thank lord. But we're alliance. So. Yeah, we're alliance. So I this was is... say, could you imagine a 4 for 4 <laughs> That would have been quite crazy. No, this time he actually got a spotter. We're good. I'm not going to be, like, <laughs> dying at the bench. <laughs> now that we have the meta life, we feel pretty good about the rest of the game here, right? Like, the Dex is in on field, so it's not like he can uh, stop from... Uh, the the Goro play can stop itself from, you know, having its stack deleted. The most he can do here is maybe evolve for two uh, into a Tyranno here. Actually, Ugh, that I do not like. So Tyranno effect. Tyranno effect, right? Tyranno effect. It's mandatory, correct? Is Tyranno, when did you roll it? Uh, oh, that That's is true. on play only. Probably. It's on play only. Never mind. And we don't, two memory level five, you're, you know, you're, you're just happy to race here. Uh, oh, there we go. Oh, Beautiful. There go. The Herc is back on the perk, and because it was a Tyranno, we're free from getting taunted, so this is 
Ah, uh, El Suspendo. Do we have enough DP to punch through? Uh, yeah, we do. We he's, have the uh, plus 2k. Right we have the 2k from the Quagga. So True. I think we're 40. Herc 30, go get your check. Yep, stack just dies here. Yeah. And I don't think he gets any memory back, but he has a 12k. Uh, well, the giving the boost that, is uh, not great. But we don't have an egg, so we can't evolve from the trash. So for the rest of the game, everything has to come from hand, and we don't have any more rookies. Hercules clearing the board in that way is a really fun. Uh, the flavor in this game is great, man. That's a great reference to the time in Digimon Try, where Hercules basically solos the boss. <laughs> so trading and a, uh, sorry, two tradings here. So we could potentially go into. Uh, oh. oh, hello. Sorry, hello. Uh, <laughs> see what I'm doing there? Please do not try and end on this Hellugamon. I beg. Actually, Machi, he's okay. considering the line. Okay, I mean, one. you gotta do what you gotta do. I mean, the swing here still doesn't really matter. None of his ESSs do anything, like no yeah. DP game. So he's swinging 12 into effectively, uh, I want to say 12 into 13. Uh, so he's forced to use yeah, the Metal Life here. Probably. And then, yeah, it gets to Dex Evolve from Trash. The Dex Evolve doesn't really do anything. Uh, we're just cycling more and more cards. Please drop we, it. You there know. we go. How close are we to decking out? That's, I think, the win con, right? Yeah. Why go sideways? Like, you just keep bullying. Ooh. Oh, a little late game analog action for the fans at home. Yeah. There's your Lugamon bot deck off the first search. I think that's the last, last card in deck. Yeah, this in deck. might just be like a tilt thing. And it Which makes me think that the fourth Lugamon we did not see is one of those four security. Yeah. Fellas, I think it goes to show that the black blocker players can go ahead and put on some purple sneakers and change the base up. But at the end of the day, Green Suspend still has it like that. Two memory. Tyler, uh, sorry, uh, Hercules here. Uh, with the ability to pierce, we can happily go into a tyrant here. There's really no reason to not go into a tyrant. It's not like, you know, you largely care about the opponent cracking back, right? They don't have eggs. Uh, even if you give them memory, uh, all of the resources need to come from the hand. And they're also on last card. So if yeah. you just clear here and pass, you 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 pretty much win the game. Yeah, like it's drop a blade and then swing for a billion. Oh, Tento as well. It couldn't it couldn't look better for them right now. In a lot of ways it's kind of funny to see because like oh, you know, obviously being able to swing over is huge, but Oh, he's missing his main timing because he's past the one. I think it doesn't it, matter. The DP's yeah. enough. The, yeah, the DP's log in here, right? I was gonna say, in a lot of ways, it would, it's funny. Obviously, the oh, risk no mitigation analog? there was. Oh, enough. we can't we can't even analog because we don't have an yeah. egg. No yeah, eggs. yeah, All that's right. effectively. GG's the good stuff from the uh, Hercules player. Obviously, really unfortunate that the Daruga player kind of just got cooked. But uh, yeah, pretty pretty clean. That's a banger game, guys. I, I It's been a little minute since we had Bugs getting a lot of love on a stream. I, it's, you know, if you guys have been keeping up. It, last week in North America, we had Greymon's Day Out, which was a fun one. But uh, it's cool to see, you know, BT-16 archetypes are, I would say, uh, how do I put this? Uh, Device? Um, <laughs> controversial. Controver controversial. And then it's like Tentamon doing a thinking pose. Yeah, it's like the problem <laughs> with BT-16. It's like um, Izzy's Ransona. Yeah, yeah, Izzy's Ransona is the stamped version of uh, Mega Kabu. Uh, yeah, very good. I will say this, though. It is pretty cool to see it take, uh, you know, there's there's some merit to these like, decks of the last 12 months really kind of being a, a new power floor for Digimon. It's, it's a cool thing to see. And, you know, like, we all complained about how Tentomon had two cards before this, so cool to see the guy do it. Cool to see another one coming soon. Uh, check with your, your reveals channels locally to you. You haven't seen it since, but uh, it's a good time to be a bug guy. What are we expecting for the rest of the day? Because, you know, round one, you can just about see anything. I don't think this is... We're going to see Tyron and Gora for the rest of the day. I'm expecting, uh, you know, a certain puppet, puppet deck to, to... Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. You know, I wouldn't be surprised if during an online regional where there's no chance to drop and go buy board games that we might be seeing some plants later on. Plants, I can see some plants. I'll say this, fellas. Uh, we, as we compete here, Raiden Trades Online Digimon Dojo, this is Mirage's backyard. This is where he comes to take it easy on a chilled out Saturday. Uh, and last week, in Latam, Mirage took two W's on the way out. So, it you know, 
there's a lot to be said about that particular deck. Some people have their thoughts on it. We're not going to get into all that right now. Yeah, we got but five minutes plus overtime. We got time. Uh, I I would not be surprised if we get a Mirage in the next round or two. I I, I would be shocked if we haven't seen it. Both versions too, both the Galaxy and regular Mirage, like they're incredibly powerful decks. That, and then just know. like Fish Engine as well. Like there's fish. so many different mm -hmm. flavors of Demon uninteractive Lords. OTK small. Demon Lords is another that I'm expecting to see today alongside like Imperial. I think those are like the big, you know, four. Uh, it's like Imperial, Mirage, uh, Demon Lords, and funnily enough, Levia. Yeah, Agar is still kind of popular oh, as well. Yes, Agar. Like, I it, would be interested to see. We actually still, I was going through some of the numbers last night. There's plenty of blue in the top cuts, but we actually have not had Imperial take a win in EX7 here in the West. So it'd be cool to see if they manage to get over the finish line today. Uh, you know, it's one of those ones. It's like you need to play eight, seven rounds of best of three. The variance in your DNA that can get you sometimes. And so. for today's variance, it, I believe it's 192 players and it is eight rounds of Swiss. Yeah, full, yeah, so. full Swiss, no top cut. Online regionals don't tend to do the top cut, uh, at least here in the West. Mm -hmm. uh, Glasgow regional, we did mm -hmm. see top cut at top yeah. 16. And like, interestingly enough, like as someone that has been in charge of the footage for that, going through it, it's amazing how long it took for Imperial to hit top tables. Like it was like, all this variety and then we hit round five and it's been one or more imperials and be, all the way until top cut you could be <laughs> running hot on the day but you could just be on table two all day yeah yeah i mean uh, the I, x1 bubble is real too a lot of these oh, xv1 likes to sit there going i'm xv1 and i'm <laughs> looking for you and it's like oh you're on a run that's a real shame because i got i got taxes to pay you know the noodle shop it's in a slump right now time to go do my side hustle which is getting prize cards david and kenjamin don't pay me enough so i gotta find my way in the hard way um i'm also expecting to see maybe some armor you know it's a deck that you know does eventually i don't think armor has what anything but it tends to it's been close convert. a couple top fours it yeah it's quite nicely it depends on the build a lot of the current like armor builds are opting to play things like uh two paladins uh and they tend to set up for like big uh unaffected paladin turns especially against uh, the more mega zoo type decks, like that's usually your game plan. Um, I'll say this as well. In terms of the last couple of things that I would be surprised if we didn't get to see, we've seen, we talked about Imperial, talked about, I mean, we've seen both uh, Bugs and SOC. Uh, I'm all for the Greymon hype train. A Dark Horse with two weeks left in the format, two weeks, there might be some product delays. We'll see how that goes. Um, but it, Call it two weeks and some change for the last, you know, incomes of the steel chair, black four Greymon, seeing multiple tops, a bunch of t super like promising Greymon placements, and conceivably an out to one of the most popular decks in the format being Levia by just being a protected giant dude, uh, is kind of contented here. Like it, it, it presents some lines where it's like Tamer Hate is strong. We understand that in the format. Getting out ahead of Agar is a big deal. And realistically, it's not the worst matchup spread, you know. You got to dodge those angels, but uh, neither of us have mentioned we expect to see any angels here today. So yeah, it maybe did. you get away with it. I don't know. No scrambles kind of hurts. Like, we you have saw, to be the chosen one. Yeah, we, did, so we, we saw it in the middle of that. Even if you're the chosen one, Davis can got hands, bro. <laughs> like, you may occasionally just get beat up in 10 minutes. Yeah. I, I mean, what? I believe it was two weeks ago today we had BWG getting fourth. We've had bunch of omnimons that deck can get massive and easily get through stuff oh omnimon uh, ace technically like as a greymon you know represents. yeah half of the cards in that deck do say greymon, greymon. on them or agumon yes they say agumon let me stop you there <laughs> if they were that searchable it'd be a lot easier to play that deck no but i think omnimon is also like a very potent deck right um it it's has a taikamiya enjoyer deck no. uh what else i mean uh, We've not mentioned uh, the like one of the dark horses here in the room as well, which is that like sure Agar is good. We know Agar is good. Ancient Greymon has top. Uh, there is a certain skill floor where Red Hybrid is just like, hey man, good morning, say it back. I think with uh, Red Hybrid, you have one of two mindsets, right? Which is I'm going to dome you for five with you know the secret rare Ancient Greymon, or I'm going to play sort of like a hybrid between like Emperor Greymon and the new Ancient Greymon, where it's like both of your cards do largely the same thing and you're playing more towards that sort of like mid-rangey you're still in a, mm -hmm. an aggro deck but you just have the ability to play a mid-range game plan as opposed to 
uh, just committing to the old Greymon, uh, ancient Greymon lines. The new yeah. ancient Greymon does feel really, really crazy as well. Um, just because a lot of the times, like the old combo where it's like push warp, you're hitting them for three rather mm -hmm. than hitting them for five. So being able to just go into something that just has native set plus one and kind of hitting them for two or three anyway doesn't Good feel enough. that bad. Being able to pop and then that card has raid. Like I know, oh, yeah. like famously, like card game players don't read especially red players but yeah that keyword's pretty good like you can pop something next to the thing that you're trying to actually hit you can two for one yeah that's yeah, something yeah. that uh greymon or rather a uh, red hybrid used to sort of struggle a little bit uh dealing with like a couple bodies between like you know if you, your opponent had like a level four or level five and then like a main stack um it was quite often that you could only really take care of one thing but now the ability to just like answer sort of like half boards is really really good uh, yeah, well, it's only going to get better damage. in 2.0 as well. Oh, yeah, 100%. Like having another Emperor that has all those removals. What a card. What a card. Are you sick of Partition? So is he. Get in the bus. You know, a little bit of this and a little bit of that and a little bit of the other one. Uh, but that, I think, is also quite susceptible to uh, aces, like anything that has, like, a protected um, a protected stack followed by, like, an ace play can be quite devastating. And, uh, notably, a black hybrid a mother mm -hmm. control. That deck, I think, even though it's a not super popular deck, it does have a bit of a ceiling to it. Uh, it is something that I'm expecting to uh, show up today. Um, you know, it's very, very difficult to play against unless you have Tamer removal. And there's a deck just has inevitability. You know, eventually that Quartz Mon is going to get you. It's just going to burn for three and the game is effectively over. Man, I do hope we do get to see some Quartz Mon in its uh, original archetype. What, Black Hybrid or Hunters? <laughs> hunters? He means Hunters, I think. <laughs> Ah, Hunters? Yeah, that's there too. Yeah, you know, and by original archetype, I actually mean green good stuff. I tell us all this time. Yeah, Hunters are actually appropriating their own card back from the Plants players. I will say this, in terms of the decks that have kind of plateaued and never quite hit that finish line of winning an event, you'd be surprised. A lot of people talked about like, oh, EX7, just another blue format. But really, the only blue deck, like straight up blue base, blue list to have won a regional this format is Mirage. It won in Lactam last week. Um, but it has been red base Galaxy Mirage, uh, a whole bunch of Leviamons, a Demon Lords, and a Fenrir Takami Kazuchi in North America last week. So, well, um, well, well. Hey, I was saying, Takami Kazuchi, he's that guy. VT14, Lugo Fenrir, still, still trash. <laughs> 